So let's start this um, tutorial by clicking on window and adding this new element to the column of the right, which is called outliner. Uh, this is going to be very useful because if you're going to create a lot of assets, it's better to have them organized in groups and components. This person here is a component. So if you choose this tool, which is called move, uh, obviously, uh, you can move her all around the scene. And as you can see, there's a red dotted line that follows in a parallel way the axis that is on the floor, the horizontal one uh, in this case. So I've added also this uh, keyboard because it's very, very important that you get familiar with both the shortcuts that uh, we're going to use uh, of the tools of this program and also the mouse because you don't want to be clicking on every single icon uh, all the time. It's going to make your 3D modeling uh, way faster. So as you can see here, every tool that you're going to use has its own shortcut. Uh, you can um, check these uh, menus here or just click on, the, uh, on the, the icons that you have here in the toolbar. As you saw, um, we just press the spacebar, that's the selecting tool, which is the pointer, the black pointer on the left side. But also you can uh, use, for example, for the icon move, that is that one over there, the letter M. So that's your shortcut for moving. So spacebar for selecting, so you can select everything that is on the scene, or letter M for moving. Another important thing is you, that you have to save everything that you do. So if you didn't do it, do it right now. And also the shortcut for this is Control S, which is the one that you're using probably for uh, tons of another kind of softwares. Um, so just get used to it because it's going to save your life. Just Control S at every, I don't know, maybe two minutes. So let's start the exercise by creating a plane, which is going to be a rectangle. And we can uh, rather press the letter R or just click on the icon here on the toolbar. And we select uh, or start from the vertex here and create a rectangle. It doesn't matter actually the size, but what really matters is that we need to release it without pressing any other key, okay? Because something uh, very cool about this program is that it allows us to write the measurements or the dimensions, but you need to do it always respecting uh, the system of measures that exist in your country. In my case, which is Spain, uh, we use commas for decimals and semicolons to separate the two uh, dimensions that we're going to write over here. So you just need to type 13 comma 2, then semicolon 7 comma 5. So from now on, we're going to follow every measurement that Valeria Vitales provided us in her handout. So I repeat, without clicking or changing any tool, you need to type down the measurements and press enter. Now let me take this moment to show you how to use the mouse because it's going to be your best friend along with your keyboard. So these here are the three tools that you're going to use, Orbit, Pan and Zoom, a lot. So Orbit, the first one, uh, this icon here, you can press over the icon or just uh, click on the middle mouse button. It allows you to orbit the scene and see everything from a specific uh, pivot point. Let me show you in addition how there are two colors when creating a plane, this rectangle. The normal face, which is the white one, and the hidden face, which is the gray one, in which anything uh, will work, uh, even if it's the textures that we apply, many other things. So we should avoid gray faces as far as possible. So let's move on to the pan tool, which is this hand. Uh, it allows us to scroll through the scene on the same line, kind of. So you can once again click on the middle mouse button, but pressing also shift. If you do both, as you can see, you can move all around the scene. Remember that you need to press not only click once, but press one or both of these keys to make it work. 
And last but not least, we have the zoom. Uh, we have this uh, tiny magnifying glass icon, so you can press on it to select it or just use, as I'm doing here, the mouse wheel to zoom in and out uh, whenever my pointer is resting, okay? So uh, you just select one area and zoom in and out whenever you need to. So shortcuts and mouse, these are very important things, so I encourage you to invest some time at home to play with them. It is very necessary that you become familiar with these. Okay, so we're going to start by creating the walls from the floor plan, which is still plain, and we are going to use the offset tool. The shortcut for this is the F, and you have the icon as well here at the toolbar. So once you selected it, you need to create a figure or a, a line, which is actually going to be a rectangle, an inset within this face. Every object, every 3D object is going to be composed by uh, these edges that I'm selecting here. The face or the surface, that is the gray area over here that is now selected. So, and vertices which are on the on every corner. So you are creating now this um, offset with this offset tool, this uh, rectangle, and you're adding uh, at the same time the measurements. Okay, so another thing that will save your time is to eliminate the zeros in the decimals. So it is not necessary to write, uh, to write down uh, 0, 44, just uh, comma 44, it's going to work just fine. So uh, press enter and then you have the exact uh, measure. Now I'm selecting uh, the outer surface. As you can see, it changes the color or gets darker when we uh, select an element, if it's uh, rather surface, edge or, or vertex, okay? So now with that selected, you need to change the tool. Now we're going to use an extruding tool. You're going to find it elsewhere as extrude, but here it's um, simpler, a simpler way, which is uh, called push-pull tool. Uh, shockingly, the shortcut for this is the P. So you can rather select it there at the toolbar or press the letter P, okay? So once you have it, you select uh, the outer surface and you uh, pull and then you see you're creating a shape. Once again, if you want to write down the measurements, in this case the distance, you have to do it right now without clicking uh, anything else. And remember to press enter so your walls now have the exact uh, measurement of 6 meters. You can orbit that to see uh, how it worked. At this point we're going to need some help, so we are going to uh, make some uh, guidelines shown here at our scene. And as you can see here, I'm uh, showing you how to use the cameras. Uh, right now we're using the perspective camera, that's the one for the 3D, you're in a three-dimension space, so you can see everything. Uh, if we select here the point of view, we are going to choose now the front side. You are seeing uh, above on the left side that uh, if you choose the camera, it's going to show uh, the one that you chose. So in this case, again, we're choosing front camera. So now, as I told you, we need to uh, create some guidelines uh, that are going to be our future doors or entrances uh, of this building. With this tool, which is called the tape uh, measure or the tape tool, uh, again, shockingly, uh, the shortcut for it is the letter T. So we can rather uh, click T or click on the icon here. And now uh, from the edge on the left side, the edge that I'm selecting here, we're just going to drag uh, the line, the dotted line that is going to show show up now. And this dotted line, we can uh, drop it whatever we need because again, we're going to uh, use these uh, 
space here to write down the length in this case comma 73 again we're going to repeat this uh, exercise but now we're changing the measurements and we're going to respect the length that uh, Valeria Vitale has given us in her handout so in this case 2 comma uh, 35 and press remember always to press enter then again we do it and we write down 3 comma 08 press enter and we have another one that's the last one for this size and this time is going to be 5 comma 43 now we have to do the same but since we need to begin from the edge on the right side I'm going to fast forward this you just have to type down the same measurements that you used for the left side once we're finished we need to do the same but instead of doing it using the edges on the sides we're going to start uh, with this tape tool from the bottom of the building so same thing we just uh, drag and drop and write down number three press enter and then again uh, another line and uh, write down three comma six and click enter so now we have the guidelines that we're going to use to create the arch doors so now we're going to use again a tool that we used before which is the shape one the rectangular one so by pressing R or clicking uh, this icon on the toolbar we're going to connect the vertices of this uh, shape that we created with the guidelines from one point one vertex to another as you can see uh, we are creating here a perfect uh, square that's why the the middle line but here it snaps so when you uh, release the button it's just going to snap to the other uh, vertex so we're doing the same for every one of these uh, spaces which are going to be uh, the doors the the entrance of the building but now we are going to use uh, another tool which is uh, by pressing a we have the arc one so uh, this one is uh, rather tricky because uh, you have to um, start at a specific start point which uh, obviously the easiest is uh, vertex and then uh, go around the other point that it's going to be the end of your arch okay so now if you as you saw if you do it uh, and try to you see go up and down it's very difficult so you need to click on the second vertex and from the second vertex you go up and click again to make it uh, still at the point that you prefer which is obviously the one that uh, we have uh, along with the guideline so remember you click on one vertex go to the next one then go up with your mouse and click again to create the arch. Now we're doing the same for the rest of the arches. Now uh, we need to get rid of some spare elements. Uh, I mean, it's logical that we're not going to use these edges over here. So you can select uh, one by one and just press the key on your keyboard, which is uh, called, I think in English, delete. Uh, so uh, you can do it one by one as I'm telling you uh, or another thing that I can I can show you now is that you can select one and by pressing not releasing the key control you can keep going and selecting the other ones and now just press delete and you're just uh, got rid of uh, any of these excess parts that we are not going to use so now of course we need to get rid as well of the guidelines that we're not going to uh, use anymore so we go to edit and just click on delete guidelines now we have this clean 
uh, front surface and what's left is uh, actually extruding these art areas that we created so by selecting the push pull tool or just uh, clicking over the P uh, letter on your keyboard you have your tool selected and now you need to go over this uh, surface here and push through now you're going to see this message up here this offset message over here so just click and when you click now you can see through the door because you created an empty space so now you have uh, your first art uh, door so instead of doing the same again and again we just press p or select this tool and double click on every one of these areas sketchup remembers the last parameters you have made uh, with a tool and duplicates them with a double click Take this moment to play with the orbit, pan and zoom with your mouse while I explain how to import uh, textures. A uh, texture is nothing more than a kind of uh, peel, okay, that we place on a 3D asset or a 3D object. Uh, on the right column, uh, SketchUp offers different default textures or materials with which you can paint each polygon or each surface of your object or simply uh, you could use uh, colors not only these textures that I'm uh, showing you but you can uh, use this lighting menu and try whatever you you prefer you can also play with these and uh, have some fun Once you choose your texture, you just need to drag and drop it uh, over the surface you selected. In this case, it's, um, it's not uh, working well with the, with the asset that we're creating, but anyway, you can, uh, as I was telling you, play with it a little bit. We already have our own materials provided by Valeria Vitale. Uh, in your handout you have that uh, apparently it says edit but it's not edit you need to choose file obviously and then uh, you will find import click over uh, the import section and then it's going to send us to the place we downloaded these images in my case I have them there as you can see and you just open the folder these uh, tiny images here, you can just uh, delete them. These are the thumbnails of the original images. As you can see, these are uh, almost 80 uh, kilobytes. So this is almost nothing. <laughs> so this is, uh, as I told you, a, like a miniature of the pictures. So now just be careful and choose the right one. In my case, uh, the one that I'm selecting because I selected the west wall is this one over here. So you can uh, double click it or just uh, press on import. And then you have this image over here. It works uh, kind of uh, different in a different way than the paint packet that I showed you earlier, because now you have an image that has its own size. So in this case, you need to click on one of the edges when this red uh, dot shows up. And now, uh, drag it until it snaps with the other edge. Now, of course, if you orbit through the scene, you can go inside the building and it creates a kind of a, a virtual environment or experience. So you can feel what you have done until this very moment. Of course, you could also move it, but this is also very tricky because as you can see, you can move it all over the place, literally. So if you want to do it like in an up and down way, just follow this blue line, blue dotted line, because it's uh, in a parallel way uh, with the axis that I'm going to show you right now you see the one of the axes on the floor the red one the blue one is the one that goes up 
vertically so that's the best way to move it and in your handout it doesn't say that you have to put it in a specific uh, place uh, so just put it whatever you prefer next you must repeat the process obviously but this time you have to choose the image that is corresponding to the frescoes on the south wall the system is the same you just go to the left edge click when you see the red square then expand the image until it snaps on the right edge then again you can move it as I shown you pressing the letter M or just clicking on the icon and trying to make it match with the other fresco you can see that this is not exact um, there is another way to make them come together that I will show you when we place the last texture, the one on the north wall. You see, it snapped when you drag it down. It snapped with uh, the other vertex that corresponds to the first texture we applied. We already have all the textures in place, so we can move on to the next step. So before we dive into how to import a 3D object, we have to create a cube. This cube will be the pedestal that will support the figure that we will import later. So we are going to create a rectangle by pressing the letter R on your keyboard and immediately type the measures, which are comma eight and comma six, and then press enter. Now we have our plane, our square, and of course we need to push pull so extrude this area here so by pressing the letter p we're going to extrude this face and write down comma eight and press enter so we have uh, our cube now what i did is press uh, click three times with my mouse so this way i can move uh, freely my new cube if I only press one or two clicks, this whole area is going to be selected and this is going to happen. So I'm not going to move the whole object. And as you see, when you orbit the scene, it's kind of weird. So here a control set just saved our lives. So <laughs> try and press control S to save your work, just as a reminder. Now we're going to import the 3D asset. Valeria suggests that we use the SketchUp library. So to do so, we move to the right column and select components, okay? So there, uh, on the search area, uh, she tells us to type down uh, ancient statue, which is what I did. But if we do this, we do not find actually the one that she uses uh, in her handout. So following her model, we will search uh, Venus de Milo instead and this is where we find the sculptures similar to the ones that she's using. So we can pick whichever we prefer but I picked the one that is uh, the most uh, similar one uh, which is this white one. Uh, when you mm, just uh, select it you need to drag it into your scene and as you can see it's huge, it's immense, okay? So we need to make it smaller and we're going to use a new tool which is called scale here you can see the shortcut um, obviously is the letter s uh, on your keyboard so you press s or just click on this icon and then you will see these uh, vertices that are in green color and if you move them you're going to move the figure and deform it uh, 
along with with the moving the movement sorry that you're giving so the best way to do it uh, equally is just choosing one on the corner and try and resize the figure just uh, drop it uh, wherever you prefer <laughs> and then write down uh, coma 5 that's going to give you half of the original size and now obviously what we could do is just move this um, this object that you can see here that it's um, in the hierarchy in the uh, here at the the right column it's a component so i'm just renaming it uh, because i like it to be very organized at some points i don't know if i told you but at some points you're going to have more than 100 assets here so it's better if you get used to organize these things uh, into groups and uh, and components this is a component and as you can see uh, there's nothing else. You have the component of the statue. I just rename it uh, the object which is inside the component is obviously the sculptor. Uh, so I renamed it, rename it as Venus. And now what I'm doing is changing the view of my camera. Uh, I'm using the perspective camera. I don't know if you remember, but this means that I'm not going to get a proper left view in this case or side view or profile view okay of course I can move the statue as I'm doing here and I can follow the guidelines uh, that I I've been showing you uh, all over this uh, tutorial but the best way to do it is changing the camera to this orthographic one or parallel one which is this uh, you you're getting this weird view but when you choose the perspective uh, the right perspective, in this case the left one, you're going to see uh, the best way to, to, to see this object, okay? So now you're going to move it, as I told you, in the best way possible, following uh, the line, in this case, uh, and putting it over the pedestal as best as you can. You don't have to be uh, in a, it doesn't have to be in a perfect detail as you can see here these um, triangles uh, in the sculptor uh, that indicates that, that that's, a, that's a mess of a mesh <laughs> actually but anyway the thing is that you put it over the, the pedestal and now obviously what we have to do is the same but changing the view in this uh, using this parallel camera but first of all, let me show you how to create a group. You just select the object, in this case, the cube, uh, right click on it, create a group, and then right click on the group and rename it. So I'm just going to go with pedestal and I'm going to include it, dragging it down the statue component. So now these two objects, when I change to perspective view, are uh, part of the same uh, component the same group these are well actually these are individual groups within a whole component okay so now again I'm going to change the camera to the parallel view and as you can see I'm using the perspective camera here so I'm not going to get the best um, of the angles so I'm going with the parallel view and as you can see here that's perfect I just need to move it until it uh, hits the pedestal It is uh, very important that you remember to change the camera view because as I told you, the parallel view has a weird way. It's, it's called orthographic and you're not going to get the, the full experience of a 3D. And we're going to create the rooftop. Now you need to change your camera view to the left side. Select again or press R to create the rectangle shape go to one of the or start uh, from one of the vertices and just draw this rectangle now you need to enter the dimensions down there so you just press 7 comma 5 and then the next numbers are comma 5 or just 0 comma 5 and then press enter now you have the correct size 
and of course as you've already guessed now you need to extrude this plane here so you just select the surface that you're going to extrude press p and then go through dragging this face again without clicking anything else you just write down 13 comma 2 and press enter and now you have your rooftop now we're going to select the offset tool or press f and we're going to create as we did earlier some figure but this time instead of doing it on top of a surface we're going to start doing it from the edges and now you need to type 0.2 or comma 2 to get the right size now that we have this new surface, we need to extrude it with the tool push pull, so press P and then type down 0.5, which is the height that we need for the rooftop. Remember that if you double click the other surface, it's going to get even with the one that you just did. So the next step now would be get rid of these lines, of these edges that we created. Uh, with the offset so you just need to do what you did with the arches just select every one of these edges pressing control and now when you have everything selected just press delete well so we already have the roof base but we are still missing an important part which is the gable roof for these i have chosen to change the camera perspective to right and move the scene a little bit to see the surface better now I will use the line tool L on the keyboard and start drawing a line joining the two midpoints over the rooftop. You're going to see those little blue balls. These are the ones that you need to connect. And now you have the line that is uh, separating these two parts over the roof. Once the line is created, press spacebar to select the new edge and move it up. I suggest you to follow the dotted line because it is parallel to the axis and this way it's going to be centered. Finally, type down 1.5 to get the correct distance and at the end of it you need to close the roof with some lines to create the base of the cornices. So just press L to select the pencil tool, the line tool, and go ahead by drawing this line between the two vertices that are on this part that will be the pediment of the building. To create the cornice and the pediment we need to switch the camera to parallel projection and this is the orthographic view and as I said before that's why it looks so weird it's not the perspective one so what we're going to do next uh, will happen on the selected surface over here now we should change the perspective of our parallel camera to the left view we zoom in a little bit to work better on the area that we're going to manipulate and then we type L now with the help of the pencil we're going to try and i emphasize try because it is not something that comes out the first time as you can see but we will try to join the two vertices that i'm showing here until they snap and we have this triangle here again we change the camera to perspective or three dimensions and with the help of the zoom and orbit, we select the base surface of the roof's ledge. This time we're going to include a new tool, which is called Follow Me. It leads a face along a path to create a 3D shape following the mark surface. So just select Follow Me and double click on the triangle we have created. And voila, you have your cornice all around the building. To shape the pediment, we have to use once again the offset tool by pressing F. And as there is no specific measurement in the handout, I have been playing along with the numbers until I've typed 1.5 because it gives it the appearance I think it could have had. 
now we have to extrude the area by pressing the P key, clicking on the surface and pushing it inwards. Type in a distance of 0.15 meters and press enter. To repeat these two actions on the other side, remember that you only have to choose the same tools that you used and double click on the surface so it duplicates what we did on the other part. For the next step, I suggest you change the camera perspective to right and in this perspective, press spacebar to select the top two edges of the gable roof to make another extrusion. The difference is that this time you will extrude the edges, not the face of the object. So press F or offset tool and move it up. We need also to connect the vertices to close the shape. So press L and draw a line connecting the extrusion and pediment points. You have to repeat uh, on the other side, so just go ahead and move around the scene and then you do the same on this side of the pediment. As you can see, it's not um, the best shape here because in the handout it has another kind of shape, more vertical, but we're going to fix it um, at some point. Don't worry about that for now. As you can see, now we have a plane to extrude and this time we type P for push and pull tool and drag it to the center. The measure here is 0.25. We can repeat the same on the other side. If you remember, we just have to select the shape and just duplicate what we did by choosing the tools we already have chosen on the other side of the roof. Good, so at this point, if you want to replicate exactly the reproduction that Valeria Vitale um, has made in her handout, you just need to select uh, two edges of the parts that we just created and move them with the M key, doing it inwards uh, to the center of the roof. Be careful because the movement is very, very sensitive and you must always follow this dotted line to make it snap in the right place. Once you're finished, you can repeat the same on the other side. To finish our 3D model, we only have to make a couple of moldings. The first one, we're going to do it over the roof. Uh, we are going to create an arc, pressing the A key to select the arch tool and place the first end point on one of the edges, while the second one, we will try to make it as parallel as possible on the other side. After clicking and fixing the two points, remember that you have to move it up, move your mouse up and click when you believe that the arc is in an optimal position. Once you have this done, you just have to select the surface, the area, the face that you just created and press P for the push and pull, so the extruding tool. Click on the arc shape area and extrude it until it reaches the opposite side. Before making the last molding in our building, I am going to show you how to organize the objects by groups in the outliner section of the right column that I mentioned at the beginning of this tutorial. As you can see, I have moved the statue or the sculpture and the pedestal at the same time because they are part of the same component. I have moved them because I need this area free. We are going to select the bottom part of our building. To create the last piece here so that it doesn't interfere with the base or the founding of the building, we are going to select the bottom part and uh, by right clicking on the selection, we're going to create a group and rename it uh, 
as we want I'm just going with base okay so once this is done we right click on the base group and select uh, for example lock by using lock nothing can affect uh, what the group is containing or the component is containing so if you are moving or uh, up placing something it's never going to affect the locked groups of course we control set everything and now everything's back to normal another feature of creating components or groups is that you can hide them if we hide it it will be easier for us to work with the parts of the building separately this is sometimes very very useful because now for example we are going to create some shape over the surface down of this roof and it's better if we don't have the base part kind of disturbing or annoying our work so we're changing our perspective to the left view and now we're going to choose the arc tool again so do as you want as you prefer just press a key or just press over the tool and now of course as we did earlier you just need to go to one end point to the one uh, point or the one place that you prefer on the edge and go in this case to the left to create the shape that you want there's no uh, again there's no measurement uh, in the handout so you can choose the one you prefer select all the edges of the roof base remember if you press ctrl you can select more than one if you used the parallel camera switch it to the perspective view and now select the follow me tool and click just once on the arc you have drawn and ta-da here's your last touch of the building if you now show or unhide the other items you will see your full ecclesiasterion finally i recommend you that you put into practice the organization of objects by groups so that you get used to classifying everything when you model 3d as i said sometimes you will have more than 100 assets in your scene so it is very convenient that you name and group each one of them so you don't get lost i hope you have learned a lot and i can wait to see your own ecclesiasterion bye